Welcome back to Black Bear Forge and our countdown to Christmas with simple blacksmithing projects. This video should post on December the 3rd, which I believe is the first day of Hanukkah. So even though I call this a countdown to Christmas, I want to wish anybody celebrating Hanukkah in the upcoming days a happy Hanukkah. And anybody that's celebrating any other holiday, I hope your holidays are joyous as well. These projects apply to anybody and everybody. And I'm really not trying to present these as specific just to Christmas. They're just good blacksmithing projects. Today, I thought we would make a steak flipper. And this project is suggested by Brad Lockhart. Thanks for the idea, Brad. I'm going to start with a piece of 3 8 square mild steel. This one's 18 inches long. So let's head over to the forge, get this hot. So for the handle on this, it's essentially going to be double backed with a little place that your index finger goes so you don't slide too far down the handle. It's just a handle style. You can do the handle any way you want. I'm going to start by drawing this out for that little finger curl. So I just want a nice little pad like that. And then I'm going to ease the edges where I'm going to double this over. That's just to make this more comfortable when you grip it. Because it's going to be doubled over, I'm only doing what will be the outside of the grip where your hand grips. So whatever you want to do. Something like that. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and put the little curl for the finger in here, and then we'll double this over. Then we'll start working on the rest of this. So this, of course, curls towards what will be the outside. And just about like that, we can adjust that when we're all done. And I'm gonna quench this. I get through the ice. I don't need heat where I'm not bending. This is really a handy technique sometimes to quench outside. If you're using a coal forge, it's not as big a deal because the coal forge doesn't heat that long of an area like the gas forge does. But you can also do this with a torch if you want to. So that's really all I want to do. Very simple handle. It's comfortable, it provides leverage, so if you're flipping a really big heavy steak, you got extra torque there. So next I'm going to start drawing out the handle. I think I'll leave it square to about here. Then I want to draw this out to a long point. And as usual, this draws out faster over the horn. By putting this curl down, I'm not going to accidentally hit it. If it's up here, you might get it with a wild blow. And that's a little bit riskier. And I'm going to clean up this section. I probably won't come back to it. Although, like I said, I might put a twist in right there. And we'll finish tapering from here out. So we just keep going over the horn from where we stopped. And ultimately, this needs to be drawn down to a pretty delicate point. So I'm going to want to take this down to about three sixteenths of an inch right at the point before I start to round that up. And probably I'll leave some of this square and just round up the 
part that's the actual steak flipper. And if you're new to this, and you're not used to drawing out over the horn, the curved surface pushes material both directions lengthwise, but not much widthwise. So it's much more efficient as long as your anvil's solid. If every time you hit on the horn, your tail of the anvil bumps up in the air, you're wasting time. But we are almost there. to decide how much of this I want to round up. It's only going to be about the last four or five inches. I do want an even taper and it's a little bit thinner here than it is there. So we're going to keep working on that a little bit. But that doesn't take much to fix. I'm going to go octagon for the section that I want to round up. Then I'll start rounding it. So we want this fairly smooth. The very end of this is really the only part that ever comes in contact with food. And the smoother it is, the easier it'll be to keep clean. So filing and sanding that very tip is not a bad idea. I'm going to come back and I'm just going to chamfer this edge to make it a little more comfortable if you grab it down there. So I think a little bit of quick filing on this would be in order just to clean this up some and make it as smooth as possible. I'm just using a worn out half round file and you can file in both directions. Hot material cuts way easier than cold, and like I say, it's a worn out file. I've been using it for this purpose for about 10 years. It doesn't wear it out to go both ways. And you want to be pretty quick before it cools down. This isn't a slow, methodical process. Of course, a belt sander with a 220 grip belt would be wonderful. Or just 220 hand sanding. Just right on the tip. I realize that perhaps some of you have never seen a steak flipper of this sort. But this is essentially a hook that will form on the end. And in use, you roll the hook into a piece of meat on a barbecue and you just flip it over this way. So that means if you are right-handed, usually the hook goes to the left side. And if you're left-handed, usually the hook goes to the right side. Now you could use it the other way if you're right-handed or left-handed. So just make it comfortable for you. But I like the hook on the left because I'm right-handed. So I'm going to roll this hook that way. And I think this is a place where a bending jig really makes a difference. But you can certainly do it over the horn of the anvil as well. I'll just show the jig so you see what, what I use for this kind of thing. 
And this is just a piece of pipe welded to a plate with a hardy stem and it's got a little catch here to hold the, the stock. In this case this is about two and a half inches in diameter. And I just put that hook right there in that little catch. And that gives me a start. Some things stay and some things don't. But then you can just forge around this. And that's all we really want right there. But that's not the way you want it because it doesn't work this way. So we have one more bend to put in. This is just a matter of bending it down so the handle lines up comfortably. And I let the hook come up just a little above the height of the handle. And that's really it. This is completely functional. I think a little twist here just to jazz it up some would be in order. I'll go right up to where I started the taper. And, you know, put the twisting wrench on as close to that as I can get from this end. And we'll just put a nice little twist in. Remember to put this back in the orientation it was when you started, or you might turn this into a, an opposite direction. Stake flipper. So that just leaves a little bit of last minute straightening. Try not to squish your twist. That's really about it for this project. Now you're probably going to want some kind of a finish on this, but think about it a little bit. It's going to be in contact with food, sort of. And by sort of, I mean the handle end never will be. It's only the very end. So Johnson's Paste Wax or something like that up here probably is okay, as long as it's not later going to melt and ooze down to get to the point. Something like beeswax should be okay on the whole thing, because beeswax is typically completely edible. But other edible oils are fine. Although if you're going to be giving this to, as a gift to somebody who might be allergic to nuts, I'd avoid walnut oils, peanut oils, things like that. But a lot of the other vegetable oils are, are good finishes. And after you've used it at the barbecue, It'll probably get enough grease from what you're cooking on it that it'll be just fine anyways. Well, here is our completed steak flipper. In use, you just stick that point in the steak and you flip it over. It's really just that simple to do. This should work just as well on chicken or pork or whatever you might be barbecuing. And while most blacksmiths I know tend to be carnivorous, I realize not everybody is and some of you are vegetarians. I don't think this will work very well on squash or eggplant or a black bean burger or something like that. So probably this is not one that the vegetarians are going to want to make. Now, any of you that were paying attention when I put the twist in and I told you to make sure you twisted it exactly right, I stopped a half a twist too short, had to go back and heat it up, twisted a half twist more so that my finger guard is where my finger is instead of where my thumb is. It would work either way, but this is more what I had in mind. This hook here doesn't have to be this size. There's nothing magical about that size. It can be whatever size you want to make it. Your project, make it to suit your needs. Make it longer if you have big fires or big barbecue. Shorter if all you got is a little hibachi. Doesn't really matter. Just enjoy the project. I hope you enjoyed the video and can give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done it before, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos. Make time in your day to get out to your shop and make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.